I hope that you feel the same. Today we continue our worship series, Growing Our Faith, with the message called, and uh, I, I hope that you will hear your own call as we discuss that together today. We take a moment in silence to prepare our hearts for worship. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us to welcome hope. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and make us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all of our sins. As a fellow recipient of God's mercy and grace, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and join us for the gathering song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Him for thirteen.
all. And also with you. First reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. 
For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of love. Thanks be to your God. Please rise for the honor of the Lord. there at the shore of the lake. Those who were fishing had gone out of the boats and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked all night long, and you have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching human beings. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So, show of hands, in this day and age, how many of you here have had a landline? Right? We're old. <laughs> I don't have one anymore, but I have. It was a weird world back then, right? Having to be in a certain place to get a phone call before caller ID, not knowing who was all going to be on the line when you picked up. Quite the life of mystery. If you were a teenager during the time of landlines and perhaps multiple lines in the house, how about that constant threat of a parent or a sibling? picking up the phone in another room and listening in on your conversation? That was a problem. Deep secrets could be revealed. I wonder by the looks on your faces if one or two of you might have been that sibling. <laughs> a little earlier, or at the time, same time in rural areas, maybe you experienced party lines, having to wait until people were done talking or maybe even being asked to wrap up a conversation yourself so someone else could talk. Lives can be changed by a simple phone call. Part of my own family history centers around one of these early calls that was a huge step forward for the Bell Telephone Company. See, when the famous Admiral, Admiral Byrd was making the first connection from his little America in Antarctica to the North Pole, there had to be someone to pick up the line up in the Arctic North. And that person was, true story, my grandfather, Robert Flywer. 
sent there from Seattle by the phone company that he worked for, for all over the world for most of his life. His job was pretty simple, to listen for the ring, pick up the phone, to be ready for the call. And so, holy God, we come here today to ask that by your grace and through your spirit, we too will be ready for the call. May our phones be turned on to hear your sacred story and to share it with others. We ask this in the name of your Son, our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The story in Luke's Gospel that we read together today is just a great story, isn't it? A similar one shows up in the other Gospels, but in those, Jesus kind of wanders up and tells the fishermen to cast out their nets again, and they follow him after their huge catch of fish. Reading Luke, I feel like it should conclude with the iconic saying, and that's the rest of the story. <laughs> because there's just so much more going on. First of all, it's not a quiet beach, and there's a crowd following Jesus. If it were a calm and quiet, hushed crowd, I don't think that the fishermen washing their nets after a long, hard day would maybe be that eager to let a complete stranger get on their boat and cast out into the sea again. In my imagination, though, Jesus is keeping a little head of that crowd. Maybe he swings up on the boat and says, come on, let's get out onto the water. Does Simon Peter take a double take at the crowd rushing to lay their hands on Jesus, to ask him for a blessing or for teaching? Does he fear for the state of his boat if they all got there and clambered aboard? Whatever the reason, he does what Jesus asks. And then Jesus sits and teaches from the boat. Luke doesn't say anything at that moment about the response of those who were teaching. But if they follow any patterns of those who listen to Jesus, they're mesmerized. They're being changed. And Simon Peter, he's right there in the boat with him. Can you imagine? He's hearing it all closer and clearer. The most amazing things he's ever heard in his life, without a doubt. And then Jesus finishes teaching, and we have an abrupt change of subject. Go deeper and put your net back out, Simon. Oh, hold up, Jesus. We've been fishing all day and nothing. There are no fish here to catch. You know God, sir, but we know the water. Maybe you should stay in the lane. <laughs> Did Jesus give him a just flat look? Or maybe to be raise an eyebrow? Whatever Jesus' silent response, Simon Peter backs up. Okay, okay, if you say so, I'll do it. My friends, and definitely my family, will tell you that I have a terrible habit of keeping my phone on silent or do not disturb mode when it shouldn't be. It's not on purpose, I just forget. It's so frustrating for my family that they have started to use the find my iPhone feature that, that we all share together in order to play a remote sound on my phone so I'll look at it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> but they're not wrong to be frustrated. I can miss some really important things. Do you feel just a little bit that at this moment, Simon Peter has his phone on silent? Jesus has been right there in front of them with insight into the creator and all of creation, yet Simon Peter still thinks he doesn't know about fish. Embarrassing in hindsight. Because when he relents and does what Jesus is asking of him, there's more abundance than he and his companions can handle. This is when that find my iPhone feature kicks in and gets nice and loud for something. 
And what a strange response. He falls at Jesus' feet and feels now that even Jesus' presence is too much holiness in comparison with him. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. No, Simon, Jesus says. Don't be scared. Come with me. Bring your friends. And they go with him. No more questions. They've been called. The fact that you're here today means that you already know that Jesus has a call on your life. And part of that call is to faithfully show up here, spend time in worship, and expect to encounter God. Good job. Your phone was on. But what does it mean to be called every other day this week? What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus in everyday life? For me, part of the answer is in the moment that Simon Peter doesn't get it. He's had this great Sunday worship experience, listening to Jesus teach, but now it's Monday morning and we're talking about fishing again and maybe Jesus doesn't really belong there. Peter's first instinct is to separate the sacred from the secular. I think that like Peter, this is the first instinct of many people in this crazy postmodern world that we live in. I think that most people travel through life and fail to see any deeper than their tasks, their work, their leader time. Their vision stops at the surface of the water and they have no idea that, they're, that just underneath there are enough fish to sink the boat and propel them into the greatest story that anyone has ever experienced. To divide the secular from the sacred is to miss the thing that infuses our lives with meaning. It's to walk through life with our phones on silent, when at every moment Jesus is reigning inviting us to see deeper and love stronger and hope harder, to recognize that our lives and the lives of others are not simply a series of unrelated moments, but part of a stream of time that's measured by how carefully we have connected our life to the Spirit of God. Theologian Dorothy Bass, in her book, Receiving the Day, Christian Practices for Opening the Gift of Time, asks, what is the measure of my days, weeks, and years, those I've had so far and those that remain? Are we living lives that are good in some large sense, lives that contribute to the well-being of other people close at hand and far away and to our own well-being, lives that are attuned to the good of creation and to the active presence of God? I wonder if the secular and sacred are separated, if our answers to these questions will always be unsatisfying. Perhaps the essence of these questions is whether or not we have allowed the secular and the sacred to intertwine. And so everything in this precious life has echoes of the sacred and we see God everywhere and serve God everywhere. Yesterday was an epic, emotional, mountaintop day for me, no doubt. And even though God's call to drop everything, even the awesome catch of fish that God had given us in California, and follow into something new was strong, I still needed to hear often and relentlessly, don't be afraid. So this and any call story resonates deeply with me. But even though that I believe pastoral ministry is truly important, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity, we pastors are not really the life blood of the church in the world. We're compelled to tell the story, but we might not have the best or the most opportunities for active discipleship. Admiral, Admiral Byrd may have been famous, 
But it was my obscure grandfather who picked up the phone. It's you. Your light, which marked time in the gospel story with the beating of your heart. You who go from this place into a world where there is bad news, where people fear being exposed and fully known, where they're convinced that there's no escape from the hopelessness and the sameness of their days, where they've and experience soul-crushing loss and unimaginable grief and sorrow that feels like they're bleeding to death. But you, you have other news. Yes, they're bleeding, but they are also bled for. There may be sameness now, but the news of the gospel is that extraordinary things happen. Zacchaeus climbs up a tree, a selfish thief, and climbs down a repentant saint. Paul sets out to eradicate Christians and comes back a fool for Christ himself. Lazarus goes into a tomb dead and comes out alive. Simon Peter leaves a mountain of fish for a new life. All of these individuals exposed, fully known, and yet cherished forgiven and loved anyway, walking out of this sacred place. And carrying all of that sacred truth with us is no small task. We cannot look with love and truth at the world and ignore the darkness in it. But in that darkness, it's made sacred because it's redeemed. Because with God, all things are possible. And that is the truth. So church, is your phone on? Don't leave it on silent. And every time it rings, remember that you are called. You are called to recognize the sacred nature of your everyday lives. You are called to remind others that God is active in their lives and in the world. And you are called to respond when Jesus says, follow, expecting the extraordinary. Keep your phone on. Amen. Amen. We sing together. Come now, found of every blessing, number 807, please rise.
words of the Apostles' Creed. By the power of the Holy Spirit that moves our hearts, we are bold to proclaim, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of renewal, you gather your church and send us out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. We give thanksgiving for the ordination of Pastor Havala. Give strength and guidance to all rostered leaders and lay ministers. Bless the people and ministry of this congregation. Remind us of the promise of our baptism and inspire us to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people may know you are precious, they are precious in God's sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, help us to be good stewards of the earth that you have provided for us. Guard the land from drought and flood. Protect those who are experiencing harsh weather or other natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice and peace, we lift up our leaders to you that you may lead them to protect our people. Help our leaders protect the vulnerable and establish justice for all people. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy and healing, we pray for all who suffer in mind and body and spirit. Uphold those who are suffering from addiction and grant strength to those that care for them and are also affected by their affliction. Reach out to people in prison and give them a glimpse of your mercy. Reveal your care for all those who are suffering illness. We pray for spiritual strength and healing for all caregivers. Hear our prayers for those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for our community. We also pray for the Afghan refugees that are arriving here and for those who are helping to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion and life, we pray for all the saints who have been called home in your service before us. Let them rest in peace. We pray for strength and hope for those who mourn. Remind us all of the promise of eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's uh, take a moment brief moment to share a COVID safe message of peace with each other. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
As if that's going to happen this side of no coffee afterwards. <laughs> so beautiful day. <laughs> we will take an offering at this time during announcements, and if you are a guest or a visitor here today, please don't feel any obligation to put a gift in the offering basket. That uh, is the joy and responsibility of our membership in your presence here today at the Christian itself. So, there are many things happening in the life of your church. There are often offering available, envelopes are available now. And uh, if you'd like to pick yours up, please see Tom Megan. And if you'd rather be set up for e-giving, you can see him about that too. He will help you get set up. Um, choir started this morning, 8.45 Sunday morning. It was really fun. And um, some of you didn't show up that should have showed up. So <laughs> I'll leave that there and say, next week, we'll see you there. We continue to pray for Mark Lawrenson. Um, they set up a caring bridge site for him now. You can get that site from me or just wait for your Thursday morning e news. And there'll be a link there for it. Um, he is still struggling with decision on his own. He's taking baby steps forward. So they're baby steps. And on Monday, they're going to um, put a trace option to help with the, the baby to continue. So please keep them in your prayers Monday morning. Trudy has a requested cards that she can read out loud to Mark, cards and notes from his congregation. So Please flood them, and the uh, address is still in the bulletin board. Um, so we continue those prayers, and, and that's the update. God is good, and Trudy is resting in her faith and that peace. Our community breakfast will be on the 19th this month. This is a change to the third Saturday of the month. Which I think is a permanent change. Do you have anything more to say about that, Tom? Uh, to enjoy the food, fun, fellowship, and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so, last month, that was a wonderful time of, of fellowship and fantastic food. So, I, if you haven't been, show up. And if you have been, show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one addition. If you have any menu uh, restrictions, oh, I'm sorry, it's too bad. I could be reformed. As the gifts are brought forward, we sing together our offertory and church things.
are reminded that Jesus' call on our lives is through tangible items in the world. As we remember together that on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant for my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together as the Lord Jesus taught, using whichever version of the Lord's prayer speaks most closely to your heart. Let us pray. Our Father is in heaven, heaven. heaven. hallowed be your name. Your Lord kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of fire, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and God invites all of us to come receive it. Here at Christ Lutheran Church, we celebrate open communion as simply means if you're present here today, you are welcome and invited to the table. You don't need to be a member of this church or any church. We will commune with the COVID safe packages of wafer and juice. You'll be given a packet as you come forward and asked please to return to your seat before briefly removing your mask and eating and drinking. Come now, all things are ready.
disciples of Christ sent to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.